All right, guys. Now let's discuss about this branching strategy, which is very important in this particular context. Because uh, even in any application, uh, you know, your GitHub branch is very important. Like, uh, because that is the you know uh, you know entry point. Like how you are developers or prospective you know students are going to see that what is the things which has been done here and whether they are liking or not, right? So from that particular context as well, this is pretty important. So uh, that's what uh, this is all about. Like, so this is hosted on this github.com rausai19 slash eShopping. So here you can come here and this entire uh, branch is divided into, you know, uh, multiple branches itself, right? So you can see you'll be starting from uh, clean architecture itself. Then you are going to identity server then you'll be uh, doing this uh, you know other uh, things like uh, you'll be putting this uh, uh, versioning thing uh, elastic thing and you know then we'll be doing engine setup as well so i have what i have done is for each and every segment whatever the courses which we have i have divided its own dedicated uh, branch plus there are few more branches which is feature driven and that is uh, you know uh, to give you an example of like uh, first of all this is going to present you multiple things like how do you divide uh, branches into you know featured way uh, because that is how you are going to uh, one day you are going to merge into the master branch and uh, upon approval uh, itself like so this is going to give you you know flavor of like uh, how to work in this in industry uh, pattern itself right so because this is how we generally work in normally in company so that is uh, i'm trying to give you an entire uh, you know flavor of that while coding this uh, structure and at the same time you can toggle between these branches like if in case while coding along with me if you guys you know are stuck at some place so you can just grab an example from here and see that compared with your own repository that where you are actually uh, you know having an issue with that so all right and if you go into this particular readme page you can see that this entire architecture is already placed and this is uh, pretty neatly drafted like uh, why you guys should consider this who should take this course first of all and uh, also i like to mention here one point here like github document readme file will be updated every month with the latest coupons which let's say uh, you may uh, happen like uh, you are not going to see that uh, you know the course coupons or uh, or the deals which is running on the udemy right so what will happen eventually in that case my readme page will always be updated every month with that uh, hundred percent i mean uh, whatever is the maximum discount uh, could be applied so that coupons will be you can just find here uh, to get the maximum benefit of that right so that's the thing and uh, in the introduction section you can see that what are the pattern and practices are utilized what are the sections which which we have done so far and um, uh, in this particular course what flavors you are going to implement into this entire microservices learning journey so this is obviously going to talk about that and this is how your uh, solution is going to look alike uh, from backend perspective i have used this uh, jetbrains rider and uh, i have entirely uh, done this into my macbook itself you can have obviously on windows environment with visual studio there is no obligation in that like uh, you can even utilize your uh, you know vs code or visual studio for mac if in case you guys are on mac and using visual the studio flavor of uh, so that's the thing uh, that's completely your choice itself and um, then here is uh, goes this uh, client structure which is your angular setup so obviously for angular code i am using this uh, your vs code itself and uh, you see that uh, this how this entire structure is done like all this uh, you know different folders which talks about header interceptors navbar so you know your spa application is structured in a way like it's all our modules are you know independently defined right uh, so it's like a separation of concerns i am following here as well right so this is pretty important like uh, this is the way if you you know put your uh, code neatly into that uh, folder structure uh, so it eventually makes sense right uh, even for future developers so that's what i'm trying to mean here right so once you are done with this all other things are you know all uh, you know angular usual things so i'm hoping you guys are having hands-on with angular 
so then uh, you guys can understand this in a much better context and then there comes to the deployment strategy which i was uh, you know talking about in the introduction part like um, that the helm chart thing right and this helm chart uh, which we have used entirely in this uh, particular section which is going to be your uh, last course that is the sixth course uh, wherein we'll be uh, dealing with different deployment strategy uh, and i have also given you the uh, plain old yaml concept here i usually call this plain old uh, old yaml concept this is my own uh, you know nomenclature of defining yaml because uh, i believe that uh, you know the yaml is the first version via which we used to write for yaml file for each and every assets now this has been refined uh, ever since helm is introduced uh, as the reusable template and you see this all microservices plus different assets are put together under different folders and having different you know uh, business rules which is have been put there right so that is what it is doing here and these are two scripts powershell scripts which you can see here is uh, for installing helm and uninstalling helm from your uh, kubernetes cluster uh, hosted on azure itself so in this case it's going to be aks itself now once that is done you also see this the istio uh, and this istio is nothing but your uh, service mesh implementation via istio pattern itself which you are you are going to obviously see that in picture uh, in the last course itself then there is certain installation strategy like uh, what are the minimum bare bone things which i am expecting you guys to have on your machine to run this entire journey smoothly and there should not be any problem and this is how you are going to you know spin up your all the artifacts while running this locally right so this is going to give you an glimpse right and um, uh, of this entire solution once you guys clone this up right and this is how your project overview is going to look alike and um, uh, you know that's going to give you a plethora of things right so that's what i'm actually uh, talking in the branching strategy this entire readme stuff and that is really important to understand this project structure first of all because that is on that basis you guys are going to see that whether this course is worth or not like whether you guys should invest on this or not and this slide is i have already discussed other technologies used and the workflow like how your angular application is going to look alike which you can see that it's um, something which is on the e-commerce platform uh, which is built on uh, uh, which is built on the lines of uh, your uh, you know uh, definitely on this uh, you know uh, what do you say this guy is like um, sports complex kind of thing which you can think of like this is how this is uh, structured like uh, different uh, varieties whether it's uh, different sporting kits or uh, you know uh, sporting instruments which is like say uh, shoes rackets footballs kit bags uh, like how all these types are structured this is uh, the normal e-commerce flow which i'm trying to mean here and this is how your identity servers is you know uh, integrated with your uh, front end and then it's uh, integrated obviously with your gateway to your uh, back end itself so you see that the connection of dots or the connecting dots from one to one uh, how these things are coming into play like that's what i was trying to explain uh, in, under this technologies use section and uh, once you are uh, done with this checkout flow which means like you are done with the entire journey where a uh, pub sub pattern and all those things like you are putting into one queue subscribing the queue you know consuming the queue and all those things are uh, getting utilized in this particular flow that means you guys are almost done uh, once you are done with this and that's the pub sub pattern which i was you know talking about like and then the container management so you guys are going to have at least 20 plus odd services which you will be running apart from that microservices right so uh, and how do you manage these things up right so for that there is obviously a tooling called portainer which is really a neat tool from my perspective and it gives you a glimpse of your pod logs and every infrastructure bits of your you know your component right so that's uh the importance of this portainer and i like this really uh much right for and i heavily recommend this particular tool for any of the developers to utilize uh this uh, during their microservices journey right so 
and that's the thing that elastic search which is going to have in the cross cutting concern sections which will be implementing right enabling this elastic search and you will be seeing all the flows and how to enrich the logs and how to you know go through about that so these things you will be seeing and again this is from the azure portal so once you will be putting all your services onto azure so this is azure container registry and this is how your services are put up there and uh, of course if you just guys see this aks workloads likewise so this is how this your aks workloads are going to look and let me zoom a bit if i can here right so let me just zoom this and uh, you guys probably uh, give a uh, better picture of that and um, and this is looking a little but uh, don't worry about this you guys are going to definitely uh, you know uh, experience this live with me and how to put this uh, assets online so don't worry about this uh, eventually if it is a, a, a looking little uh, smaller as well and this is what i was talking about the cube lens right so cube lens is very important as a native tooling right so cube lens is going to give you a glimpse of right how things should be right uh, uh, because what cube lens is going to do is it's going to connect with your kubernetes cluster let's say in, in this case is e shopping cluster admin which is hosted on azure itself which is nothing but your aks cluster which is uh, connected with your uh, local tool which is cube lens and it is give, going to give you a glimpse of your entire pod and all these uh, strategies which you are seeing on the left side blade here right so all these you know uh, cube concepts which you are going to know is uh, can be presented here in this particular dashboard and that is pretty neat here and that is why i re heavily recommend this particular tooling you can see this pods overviews deployment deployment sets stateful sets so these all the things which you are going to utilize in this last course itself that's why i was in insisting on you guys to have a look on the infrastructure course as well because that is pretty important from developer perspective as well because that's the thing uh, that's the way you guys are going to see that how end-to-end -end things work right and um, and that is pretty important uh, from an architecture perspective from an architect perspective because eventually you guys are getting into that uh, the boots of architect so you should be knowing all these things now this is the what is the sidecar uh, istio enabled i was talking about like you see, you see the multiple pods which is running here and um, let me see that you see this istio proxy is running and enabled so in this catalog microservices even the sidecar is injected so it's saying that inside this there are two pods right so one pod is obviously your microservice and another one which is running here is like um, is the istio proxy which is injecting the cross-cutting concerns into your services and it's looking at your service whether everything is fine or not and this is going to give you uh, a, you know a complete dashboard experience via kiali and it will present you like how your this service is working right whether it's fine or not so that's the uh, point of you know, uh, highlighting this uh, Istio running proxy, right? And that is the thing which I have also talked about in my previous videos, right? Uh, this is the Kiali dashboard, which is going to give you a glimpse of like how things works actually, and how the flow of the system is going inside, right? From one to another and uh, another to the next level, right? So eventually this will also give you a glimpse to any uh, developer who is getting onboarded, like how your system is getting connected, right? How it's actually working now this is the catalog workload which i was talking about like um, so this is you can see this is uh, microservices with the default claim space and deployment and uh, which are having the sidecar and which are having missing like so the grpc one i think the basket uh, because there is no meaning of putting this into the db assets uh, because a uh, sidecar needs to be injected into that microservices itself rather than any of the infrastructure asset that's why you're missing sidecar over here and uh, in the discount uh, section i have uh, purposely uh, you know skipped that just to give you an, a glimpse of like how to you know um, disable sidecar and uh, that you guys will be seeing in that particular course itself so don't worry about that these settings over here and um, the last bit of this is the grafana visualization which is uh, again very important and uh, you can write your custom query so it is currently uh, currently istio control plane dashboard and it is giving you a glimpse of memory cpu you know disk and all the routines plain old routine things which you can obviously getting refreshed every five minutes so you everything you can customize here right uh, 
so sorry it's getting refreshed at every five second and it's the dashboard of last five minutes uh, so that's fine and uh, i hope you guys have understood this uh, github strategy and i actually explain uh, more than the github strategy rather i have explained entirely the readme file and uh, but the gist of this like to give you a glimpse of like uh, what this entire journey consists of so see you in the next end